Welcome, denizens of the deep, to another week of Reactor Intelligence here on Blue Water BST. Now, this is one that is really about inspiration. What we're going to do in this video is show you a workflow that allows you to render loops from any number of reactor ensembles and then kind of just get jamming with them. This is a wonderfully creative way of working with Reactor. It takes sounds from the depths of Reactor and then makes them very usable uh, at the level of improvisation or, or just kind of uh, quick comping, so to speak. So what we're going to do first is uh, instantiate Reactor, if you haven't already. And I am going to load Metaphysical Function because this is the first ensemble from which I would like to render a loop. And then I am going to, uh, first I'm going to delete this old clip, but I've set up a second audio track and configured this to receive the audio from Reactor. Uh, and so this is something we've done many times before in Ableton Live, uh, in the audio from Chooser, choose Reactor 5, and then I like to choose Pre-FX. Actually, this came from a tip that someone left as a comment, I think on one of the YouTube videos, saying you'll get the loudest signal if you uh, take the audio from the pre-FX stage, which I have found to be true. So that's, that's a good insight. Now, what I'm going to do is get this going, get my uh, reactor ensemble, which in this case is metaphysical function, going with a drum loop from the uh, Raw Cut sample pack, one I've used before called, uh, or from the Midnight sample pack. Um, I, I've used this before, I really like this pack. Uh, and then just uh, see if we can get something going with this. Uh, so I'm going to record the audio in here and uh, I have to, of course, activate the audio engine to do that, but I, I generally leave this off. As you know, metaphysical function will just start going the minute it's activated. Uh, so I leave that off until I want to record. Uh, everything looks good to go here. I have the audio set up properly. I'm setting my monitor to in. I have armed the track for recording. And so when I uh, set this to record, it should start recording the audio from uh, this snapshot, which is kind of this nice lilting uh, kind of faraway lounge string sound uh, courtesy of the Resicord function in uh, the Resicord unit in, uh, in metaphysical function. Anyway, enough of me talking. Uh, let's get a listen to this. So that's how it sounds. Now, there's something that I like to do, uh, which is to switch to a different sample uh, and see if I can get a different texture here. So let's do that first before we start recording. Let me select five. See, I like that a lot because you were not getting the uh, the percussion from the uh, from the drum loop, but it is interacting with the tonal content in a really interesting way. Again, this is an inexact uh, art. It takes some kind of trial and error to see how these things work, but let's try this one. Okay, so I'm going to start this recording, and then uh, we'll we'll see if we can sync it up with the groove. Click on this. We see it's recording. So, some kind of interesting uh, dissonance going on there. But we have recorded our loop, and now I can come over here and turn off Metaphysical Function. I'm going to come over to my loop and uh, be sure to name this, because once you get a number of loops in here, uh, it can become kind of uh, messy if you haven't properly load, uh, labeled all your loops. So I'm just going to name this Metaphysical for ease and uh, so now let's get this going. I'm going to set my monitor back to auto, otherwise I won't hear the loop itself. Now this will start playing. So it's really interesting. I like that a lot. I'm going to turn down the uh, drum groove a bit so that this stands out more. So why don't we do this? Why don't we uh, change the loop range so that we're getting something more in the range of this really interesting swell that happens here, uh, kind of starting at bar four. Uh, maybe a little bit before that. Maybe let's see if we start at bar three. Yeah. Oh, I like that a lot. 
It's actually going a little bit closer. Let's try this. See if we make this a two bar loop. See how this sounds. I'm just going to drag this down in the length section of the uh, of the clip settings. And that's quite nice. All right, now let's get something else in the mix. Uh, so let's go back over to Reactor. Uh, so let's load Limelight. Limelight's a great sounding sampler. Ask me if I want to save, I don't. I'm just going to load Limelight and uh, we'll start playing around with the groove here. Of course, I have to activate the audio engine again. That's more of a housey groove. Let's try something else here. that's syncing up. I think it's part of this bass line uh, being played by the tie unit. Uh, each of these different units can be turned on or off uh, with just by clicking on them and I think there's one that I can solo here and we can uh, yeah we can hear that it's kind of working pretty nicely with that uh, swell and with the drum group. I might want to I might want to tune that down a bit, uh, but you know what I'm going to do is wait till I get this in uh, in audio format, and then I can just transpose it using Ableton Live's uh, clip functionality. So let's now record this. I'm going to create another audio track for this purpose. Why not create as many as we want here? And uh, let's see, same settings. So Reactor Five, PreFX, monitor to in, arm for recording. We'll go back over here, and uh, once we get this going, we should start, start seeing only that bass line, because remember, I have this soloed now. So, uh, so it will only be recording this bass line. So let's get this going. All right, so we got a nice uh, four bars there and uh, come back in, we can turn the audio engine off. In this case, we don't really need to because uh, Limelight works with a master transport uh, instead of just when the audio engine is on. Uh, so now, let's see what we have here. I think I can tune this down. Let's tune this down an octave and see how it sounds. Oh, I have to turn my audio or my monitor back to auto. <laughs> That's pretty nice. So, and then what you could do is, you know, go to another ensemble and add a different element. So, uh, you might want to come over to, let's say, uh, Crypt and add some more uh, drum context for the sound. So, if I load this, uh, I can do the same thing. And now, in this case, I am going to create a separate audio track just to to get our, uh, to, to save our uh, Limelight loop. Limelight. There's that. Uh, and you don't have to do it this way. You can put them in, in any order you want or stack them up if you like, but this is nice to keep them kind of separate horizontally. All right, so now we have Crypt. A Crypt is a pretty aggressive ensemble, so uh, we may or may not find something usable here, but that's kind of the point of this. Actually, you know what? I like that. It's a weird kind of uh, very organic sounding drum groove. So let's see if we can record this and get it synced up with the rest of our proceedings. All right. Oh, there's a really sharp attack there at the beginning. Let this 
go a bit longer so that we can have some place in the middle to start. All right. Turn that off. Set this. Rename. Crypt. Good. We should probably put these different color. Crypt is that spooky green color. Let's color that one green. Uh, limelight. Uh, let's color that one kind of a nice one. snow light. Snow snow white. Well, it's more of a blue. It's all right. Uh, so now we have this really interesting crypt groove, and we can put, we can actually you know what? I am not changing my limelight groove, which is not what I want to do. Come back here and change the crypt. I can move this anywhere in here and start from a location of my choosing. So I might want to move it uh, to where I really see one of these nice big transients here and then uh, bring this down a bit. Hmm. Let's move this uh, starting point through. This is kind of a nice off balance, uh, kind of off the beat chugging sound, you might say. The other thing that you could do with this is, as you've noticed in um, in the uh, fifth track that has the raw cuts uh, loop. I have set this to the B crossfader. I could set this uh, crypt groove to the A crossfader, and then in fact I could I could basically crossfade between these. So this is really a lot of a lot of fun to use Reactor this way, because it allows you to create some kind of synergy between the different ensembles. Uh, typically, unless you're using different instances of Reactor uh, in your host with different ensembles, you're not going to get the interaction between the sounds from the different ensembles all that easily. Uh, and this is a great way to, of doing it and making it very manageable and uh, and very fun to use. So. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, leave a comment, leave a note, let me know if this is useful. Uh, but in any case, I'll talk to you again soon. Take care, guys.